In this video, we're going to take a look at 15 brain exercises to keep your mind sharp. And this comes from the work of Dr. Lawrence Katz, who wrote a fantastic book called Keep Your Brain Alive, which has 83 neurobic exercises to help prevent memory loss and increase mental fitness. So first is to begin switching hands. So if you're right-handed, try using your left hand to do things like brushing your teeth or eating or using your computer mouse. Using your non-dominant hand results in increased brain activity. Now, of course, this can be very hard at first, which is why it gives your brain a pretty good workout. Another exercise is to eat with chopsticks. This is good because it's going to force you to eat mindfully, and that's good for your brain. It's good for digestion and also for calorie consumption. But if you're already good at using chopsticks, well, for the bonus, you might want to try using chopsticks with your non-dominant hand instead. Number three is to do chores with your eyes closed. So consider taking a shower or washing your hair or sorting your laundry and try doing all of these things with your eyes closed. Now this is going to force your brain to use new neural pathways. Obviously you're not going to do stuff with your eyes closed that could put you or others in danger, but being able to do this is certainly going to be able to increase your brain activity in new ways. Fourth is to do stuff upside down or backwards. So you can stimulate your brain by looking at things upside down. So an easy one to start with is by wearing your watch upside down. Now this is going to force your brain to really think every time you glance at your watch. And you can also hang clocks or calendars upside down or even your phone. Or if you want to be extra brave and do something like Leonardo da Vinci, you can master the art of writing backwards, also known as mirror writing. And number five is to read books aloud. So you can do this by taking turns reading and listening to a book with your significant other, a friend, or a child. One of the earliest demonstrations of brain imaging clearly showed three distinct brain regions lighting up and engaging with blood flow when the same word was either read, spoken, or heard. Six is to take new routes. So on a routine commute, your brain is on autopilot and gets very little stimulation, but taking an unfamiliar route activates the cortex and the hippocampus. And you can also take new routes when walking or biking or riding public transportation. And just as a side note, Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, would often drive a different route on the way home from work every single day in order to stimulate his brain. Seven is to simultaneously use all of your senses. So travel, camping, and gardening are high on Dr. Katz's list of activities that utilize your senses in new ways. Another example he gives is to go shopping at a farmer's market, where you can look, touch, and sniff, and taste all the produce. Also, being sociable and talking with a farmer who grew your food provides additional brain stimulation, far superior than just going to the grocery store and putting your items on the conveyor belt and typing it in on those automatic paying units. Number eight is to try new things. So this is about doing things you've never done before, such as maybe traveling somewhere you've never been, or checking out an unfamiliar ethnic cuisine, or perhaps even trying out a hobby that is totally out of character for you. So for example, if you're a heavy duty weightlifter, perhaps doing something kind of relatively boring like knitting would be an excellent way to be able to train your brain in a new manner. So novel experiences trigger the release of dopamine, which is also known as the motivation neurotransmitter, and it can help to stimulate the creation of new neurons. Another one is to challenge yourself with mastery. So the only way to continue to stimulate your brain is to stay out of your comfort zone and be doing new things. So once you master something, challenge yourself with the next level of difficulty or try to learn a related skill. So for example, learning a language, playing a musical instrument, or mastering chess are ideal brain exercises because there's always more to learn. Another way to keep your brain fit is to turn off technology. This is about using your brain instead of your smartphone for basic mental skills like spelling or math. Another example is to turn off the GPS and learn to read a map and use your innate sense of direction to find your way around. And I want to give you one quick example about this technology bit. I heard these teenagers checking into a hotel room, and the hotel room came to $150 for the night. And there were three of them, and the kid said, hmm, $150, let me figure out how much that is. And then I watched him take out his phone, type in his password, open up his calculator app, and type in 150 divided by 3. So definitely being able to turn off technology and actually use your brain for processing is actually a really good way to keep your brain fit and alive. 
All right, number 11 is to be able to make diverse social connections. And this is about being able to expose yourself to new ideas and other ways of thinking about things. So your brain benefits from spending time with all kinds of different people. So this is why there's a benefit in intentionally seeking out others who have far different interests, careers, social or cultural environments. And this opens you up to new perspectives and ideas which will stimulate your mental growth. Another example, and this is no surprise for the subscribers of this channel, is to practice meditation. So this has been backed up by the Mayo Clinic, Harvard, and the National Institute of Health, who has shown massive benefits in meditation. Also, major companies such as Google, General Mills, Target, Apple, Nike, Procter & Gamble, and AOL offer structured meditation programs for their executives. And to take this to another level, the U.S. military also finds meditation helps their troops deal with stress and improves their cognitive resilience and increases their ability to focus. Another very important way to be able to keep your brain fit is to get physical exercise. And that's because exercise relieves symptoms of a wide range of mental health disorders, including ADHD, anxiety disorders, depression, schizophrenia, and post-traumatic stress disorder. And also to kick it up a notch, you might want to do some exercise outside because compared to indoor exercise, exercising outdoors increases vitality, enthusiasm, pleasure, and self-esteem while lowering tension, depression, and fatigue. Another neurobic exercise is to take up a creative hobby. And that's because hobbies can act as a natural antidepressant and may protect against brain aging. So these would be things like purposeful activities such as music, or drawing, meditation, reading, arts, and crafts, and doing home repairs specifically stimulated the neurological systems and enhanced health and mental well-being. Now one last heavy-duty one I think is great for being able to keep your brain alive from the book by Dr. Lawrence Katz is to engage in lifelong learning. So to keep your mind eternally young, the best thing to do is stay curious about the world and to never stop learning. And also, you know, with the internet, it makes it easier than ever. And with channels like YouTube continually hosting Stanford lectures and Google Talks and TED Talks, there's all kinds of amazing topics out there to be continually increasing your learning with. All right, so I hope you got value out of this review about keeping your brain alive. And if you'd like more, please become a subscriber here at ReprogrammingMind.com. Bye for now.